All right, in this lab, we're going to be designing a system that has a small solar panel, a battery, a charge controller, and DC and AC loads. In fact, it's also going to have 12 volt DC loads, uh, like your normal cigarette lighter, and 5 volt uh, DC USB loads as well. Um, things that you're going to need the main parts wire, connectors, 12 volt DC battery, charge controller, solar panel, fuse housing, and fuses switch, inverter, and your cigarette lighter socket. Uh, this will be providing our uh, DC load kind of connectors. Tool-wise, uh, you'll need some wire crimpers, some wire snips. You're going to want a multimeter or a DC monitor. Uh, we'll probably do, we'll definitely do DC monitors and follow-up labs, but uh, either of those will work for now. And a screwdriver. All right. Um, First thing is, we're now using a battery. The battery is dangerous. It stores energy and can release that really quickly. Um, you want to be careful not to heat it up, not to short it. I'll talk about that more in a second. You also don't want to have it in a perfectly sealed box because even though uh, the battery that we're using is the non-spill, non-maintenance battery, it, if you overcharge it, it could... Uh, um, leak hydrogen gas, you wouldn't want that in a closed box. Don't throw it in the trash, all the normal things you do with the battery. But this one is bigger than a lot of the batteries you've worked with, so be careful with it. You can test it with the voltmeter uh, for the voltage. So you can use your multimeter on the volt settings, like it's shown here, and test the, the open circuit voltage, and that's safe. But you wouldn't want to measure the short circuit current. Because when you put it to current and you short circuit it, you're saying, dump as much energy as you can across these wires, and uh, that could uh, melt your wires. In this instance, it would probably uh, blow the multimeter, which can only handle 10 amps. So do not measure short circuit current from a battery in this way. You'd want some type of load and test the current across that load. We're not gonna do that this time. Uh, also, uh, yeah, don't, don't do that. Uh, you can touch it with your fingers, and that's because your, your hands have so much resistance that 12 volts isn't really enough to cross your, your dry hands. Um, now, uh, I wouldn't test that at a very high voltage because then maybe eventually you could cross your hands, but you should be, you'd be fine in this way. I'm not saying, you know, do this, but you could. But what you can't do is cross it with metal. That will short it. Right? There's so little resistance in the metal that it will conduct through that metal. It'll short circuit the battery. Um, this could cause uh, uh, acid spill, probably would cause a burn. Don't do this. Um, unless maybe it's an emergency situation and you're trying to start a fire in an apocalyptic situation from a car battery, you know, then maybe do this. Uh, you are going to be using a fuse and housing to protect the battery from too much draw. So if you were to short the battery after the fuse, the fuse would blow instead of the wire and the battery. Um, these are our fuses. Uh, we wanna get these as close to the positive terminal of the battery as we can, because that's what we're trying to protect. So if you have the fuse right here, and you short it here, the fuse will blow instead of the battery. So we're gonna to try to pack it up real close to that. Um, I'm gonna use the 20 amp blade fuse for this one. In the future, we can talk about how to size your fuses appropriately. 20 amps is a lot, but that's in part because the inverter that we ended up getting is pretty large. So I wanna make sure that we can handle um, powering the inverter. Uh, this is or fuse housing, and it's on a wire that kind of connects to itself. That way you can cut it wherever you want. We'll be using these little terminal uh, um, connectors. Uh, in retrospect, I wish I had used one that had a little plastic shroud around it. I'll show that in future photos. And that would have just given you less exposed metal, which would be nice. And then this is the switch that, that we're using. Um, go ahead and take your terminal, whichever one you're using, if you're using this a terminal connector or using the plastic shrouded one, go ahead and, and push it on and off of this to feel how much force it takes. Also to loosen it a little bit, get it so it's going to be easy to put on, but not so loose that it has a bad connection. Um, there we go. There, off. Same with the switch. Uh, it doesn't matter which side you put 
your wire and your connectors on on these switches when this switch is in the off position these two metal pieces are not connected when the switch is in the on posi position these two metal parts have a direct connection and that's how the that's how the switch opens and closes the circuit um, we're connecting these connectors to it so we can connect wire to it go ahead and cut that wire um, i cut it here so i could have a short section close to the terminal and a longer section of wire that's going to go to the charge controller uh, then you're going to strip that wire uh, the wire in my fuse housing is pretty thick. It's a uh, 10 gauge. So I strip it with the, the 10 marker here. You can always start with the lowest number on your wire stripper, which is going to be the, the largest diameter wire. And you work your way down until you find just the right setting so that you're stripping off the plastic insulation, but not stripping the wire. Uh, unfortunately, N gauge is too big for my connectors and uh, also for my charge controller. So I needed to separate out um, a little less than half of that wire and then snip that wire. Uh, make sure that you're snipping into a plastic bag or, or, or some type of trash can so that these little wires don't go all over the place and maybe end up shorting a system later. Um, I have some uh, terrible stories about major fires being caused by uh, little pieces of metal falling into places that they shouldn't be. Um, I'll tell those sometime in the future. Um, once you get that wire clipped down, you'll want to twist it. This is not like, I don't know, good form. Uh, what we really should be doing is having the appropriate sized wires, but for this small of a system, it's going to work just fine. Uh, push on the battery terminal connector. Make sure that it all fits. You're going to want to look to see if you want the tip of the wire that you twisted coming just up, just up past that plastic right here. Because then what we're going to do is we're going to crimp that connector down to create a mechanical connection that's tight. Um, we're going to use the red dot crimper on this red uh, um, battery terminal connector uh, and that's going to crimp it down it should look like that one solid crimp line when you're done you can go ahead and give it a little pull to make sure that your uh, that your crimping job has been done well um, strip the other side of that fuse housing same way you did before you now know whatever gauge you found out that wire to be that's the the size that you use on the wire stripper so mine is still 10 gauge um, again it's too big so you separate it Snip off those pieces, keep it all nice and clean, and twist it. There you go. Um, this is just laying out layout. So here, what we have is this connector will go onto the battery. Here's our fuse housing without a fuse, and then there's the long piece. And I was just kind of orienting it so I know how, I knew what rotation I wanted to cl uh, um, crimp on my connector with. Once you got that, go ahead and crimp it again. Now that we have one, we're going to go ahead and test its conductivity. Um, I like testing conductivity on all of my connectors and just making sure I'm doing a good job. Uh, this is the only one I'm going to show it on. I'm using the, um, this multimeter has a buzzer conductivity setting. All of these spots down here, these ohm spots, test conductivity. The number they're going to show you is actually resistance, which is the inverse. So it's going to test resistance. Uh, the higher the number, the more the resistance, um, which means the less conductivity there is. Right now it's showing a one, which on this multimeter, a one all the way to the left means it's uh, that's over its measurement value. Sometimes it'll say OL or uh, all you know different multimeters show it in a different way. But this says that there's uh, more resistance than it can measure. And that makes sense because we're measuring the resistance of air, which is really high. Uh, of course, there's things like lightning, but our 12 volt battery is not going to cross uh, um, the air like this. So we have, according to this multimeter, almost infinite resistance. Uh, then when you touch those connectors together, you have, on my multimeter, it's showing zero resistance. You might have like 0 0.0001 ohms or something like that. I have it on the buzzer setting, which is going to buzz when there's conductivity. So right now you can't hear it, but it's it's buzzing. Uh, now 
touch both ends and it's showing that it has infinite resistance, which is what we want because I don't have a fuse in there yet. So go ahead and push that fuse into the housing. It might take a little bit of force. Now, when I test the conductivity, I'm showing zero and it's buzzing, so it's conducting through there. And this fuse should conduct just uh, um, uh, with very, very little, almost no resistance until too much current is drawn through this wire and then that fuse will burn out. And there's a little metal spot in here that you see that that metal spot can burn out. Hopefully will burn out before the wires do. That way you don't cause any fires uh, and then you would have to replace that blade fuse. This is the charge controller that we're going to use. Um, it was in this box for me. Uh, you might have a different charge controller. Uh, read the instructions. Read the user manuals on all the things you get. The most important thing in this unit user manual is that there's an order that the things have to be connected in. And I am going to push this very heavily in this lecture. It's battery first, then the panel, then the load. And it has to be disconnected in the opposite order. What that means is these two middle screws are for the battery. This gets connected first. On all of these, positive on the left, negative on the right. So you're gonna connect the battery here, that's one. Two will connect the panels here, positive on the left, negative on the right. Three will connect the DC loads, positive on the left, negative on the right. And we'll do it in that order. Looking at it from the bottom view, these two are where the battery get installed. That gets in get that gets connected first. Then the panels get connected second. You get the point, loads last, and it has to be disconnected in the opposite order. This is really important. If you disconnect the battery before your solar panel, there's a good chance you'll just destroy your charge controller. So unscrew those wire connectors. It's lefty loosey, righty tidy. Um, I suggest looking at that bottom view and seeing this gap widen as you twist it open, you're gonna put the wire in there and then you're gonna screw it back down and that's gonna clamp in that wire. Um, so then grab some wire. You're gonna to wanna to cut off your black and your red wire. I'm cutting them at different lengths because I already have some red wire from my battery to get to the charge controller because of the fuse housing. That has some length and I kind of want those to be similar in total length. So I cut off about 18 inches of, uh, of black wire, strip those. My wire was uh, 12 or 14 gauge. Um, yours probably will be too. Uh, and luckily that's a gauge that fits our connectors and our charge controller. So twist it and check that it fits. Um, strip the other side. And uh, then you're just gonna and you have this single long piece of black wire. This black wire is the one that's going to connect our battery negative to our charge controller battery negative. Uh, go ahead and crimp on some connectors uh, just like you did before, but now I'm using the blue dot instead because I have these blue connectors. Um, check the fit, conductivity. Uh, you can see I got a tiny bit of wire showing through. I like it like that. Uh, not too much that it interacts with anything, but um, enough that I know it went all the way through. Um, then I'm going to cut that section of red wire and I'm going to cut it a little bit shorter. Um, in fact, about as much shorter as the total length of my fuse housing, but it's no stress. It's just about your own layout. And this is an experimental setup, so you could always uh, keep adapting your layout. Uh, strip that wire. You know what to do. Strip the other side. This is the little piece of red wire that I have uh, left. Um, Put a terminal connector on it. This is the terminal connector I mentioned earlier that I just really wish I had used on uh, some of my first connectors because this plastic is going to cover the exposed metal bits and the exposed metal parts that are connected to positive. Those are ones I don't want exposed um, because they're easy to short. Uh, crimp it same way you crimp before. Uh, it should look like this, one solid crimp mark, wire in there tight. You can still test the conductivity, stick your uh, multimeter probe in here. Push it on the switch. It doesn't matter which side of the switch. When the switch is on, these are connected. When it's off, these are disconnected. Um, now I'm going to put on the uh, red wire that had my fuse housing. Put the negative wire onto my battery. This wire is the one that's going to connect to the negative of the charge controller. Uh, make sure the switch is off before you connect it all. 
and then connect the positive wire here. And this positive wire goes through my fuse housing in my fuse to this switch. When the switch is off, that's all it does. When the switch is on, it then continues through this red wire that's going to eventually connect to our charge controller. This would be a good time to put a piece of tape or a piece of plastic. I like the ends of uh, a little one liter plastic trash bottles if you have that, um, but something to cover this and this. I'll show that at the end of this talk. Uh, now you're ready to connect. So we'll connect the positive to the positive. Twist that in. Make sure it doesn't pull out. Connect the negative to the negative. Make sure that, that doesn't pull out. And now you can turn on the switch. Boom. When you do, you'll see the display light up. This display is saying that my battery is at 12.7 volts and is, you know, fairly charged, uh, not all the way, and that it's ready to power DC. And it also, I can tell that there's no solar coming in, in part because this is late at night, but also because there's no indicator right here that shows my solar panel coming in. Uh, turn it back off while we work on some other stuff. The display shouldn't be illuminating anymore because you've turned it off. Go ahead and put that battery to the side, grab your panel. So this is what's providing power for our system. We're going to cut that wire off. You're going to want a lot of wire left connected to your solar panel so you have distance and you can reach full sun so you're not covered by the shade. But you want to leave a little bit of wire on these alligator clips because they're really cool and we might want to use them later for something. Um, I left about 18 inches connected to those wire clips, leaving me about 90% of my wire length still left connected to my solar panels. I separate that wire a bit so it's easy to work with. Uh, and then strip that wire. This is probably going to be smaller 14 or 16 gauge wire because these are small panels. Uh, it might even be smaller than that. Um, okay, put that aside. Now we're going to grab this cigarette lighter socket. This thing's pretty fun, uh, a little over the top. Uh, you could definitely do it with uh, something less extreme. This gives us a switch, a spot for a normal 12-volt DC cigarette plug, the type that you have in your car. It also gives us two USB outs and a little voltage display. Uh, pretty fun. So this is what it looks like from the back. Uh, you can follow this wiring and figure out what it's doing. Uh, we're going to cut off this black ring. I left a little wire connected to it in case I want to use that ring for something later. We're going to cut off the red ring. We're going to strip that red wire. We're going to strip that black wire. Then we're going to twist the wires so it looks like that. Notice that this wire also will fit our system right into our charge controller. We don't have to trim off any of, any of the wire. Um, so now... I'm grabbing back my, my battery and charge controller. I'm going to turn on the battery. I have my display. Make sure it's all still working. And now I'm ready to connect my PV wire because that's the second thing we connect. Positive to positive, negative to negative. Screw them in there. Um, make sure to not touch any exposed wires. Like Be careful with, the, with these exposed wires. Uh, you especially don't want to connect them to these exposed battery terminals. I really wish I had... Uh, showed better safety and had that terminal covered right there. Um, so next up, connect the DC load. So we take the DC load wires that we just stripped, the, the cigarette plug kind of over the top uh, boat connector thing that we have. We're going to put that into our DC loads, positive, positive, negative, the negative, make sure that they're fit in there real tight. Uh, that's the 12 volt uh, cigarette socket I was talking about. Uh, and then flip the DC switch on. We're ready to go. We have a display here that's showing us the system voltage. Uh, this 12.8 volts is what this part is measuring is being supplied by the charge controller. Um, and sometimes these might be different. It might be that your charge controller is showing you your battery charge, which might be as much as 14 point something volts. And that this is just showing you what the what the charge controller is supplying to our DC loads, which should which should be less than 13. Um, now grab your inverter. The inverter takes our 12 volt DC input and puts out a 120 volt AC output like you have at your wall outlet. It twist off, I don't know why this is the photo I have, but twist off these little uh, uh, connectors off the screws here. Um, this is what it'll look like once, once it is uh, screwed off there. Then we're going to grab this 
uh, cigarette plug. It might be that your inverter just came straight inverted to cigarette plug without these without these uh, uh, screw terminals, and that's fine too. You can skip these steps. We're going to screw those terminals on there, and now we're going to take that cigarette plug and plug it right into this. Uh, um, I, I got to get a better name for this, this over the top 12 volt DC socket plug thingy. Uh, we're going to plug it right into there and then lay out everything. You got your solar panel here, charge controller, battery, inverter. Um, this is a little bit of a mess, but hey, we got turn on the inverter. This green light comes on if yours, if yours has one. Um, uh, this layout is a little too tight uh, and it could be made easier to see and cleaner and safer. Um, I spread it out a little bit. It's still a little uh, uh, too tight, but at least you can see it. Um, and also make sure it's protected from you know people stepping on it. Uh, you can go ahead and test the voltages by taking your multimeter on the volt setting and just touching the screws because those screws connect to the wires. So on the left, you can test the photovoltaic panel uh, input. Um, this is at night, so it's pretty low. And then you can test the battery. My hand is in the way. That should match what's on your uh, charge control display and what's on the, uh, the actual battery voltage. 12.4 um, volts is, is pretty low. It's just because I've been running this thing most of the night without charging it back up from the solar panel. But it's still anything over 11 volts is probably safe for our battery. Uh, 12 volts is, is full enough. Uh, and then depending on your battery, above 13 or even 14 volts will be the, the full charge. Uh, now there I am testing the DC loads. That'll be closer to 12 volts um, uh, if your charge controller is working well. Um, and uh, then here, you know, waited to the morning till the sun came out. This is definitely too much shade on my panels, uh, but actually let me tell you about that in the video. All right, there's a solar panel in the sun. It is shaded right now and you'd want it in full sun, but this was the best spot and time for me to take the video. So there we go. It connects and the electricity from the photovoltaic panel is coming into our charge controller. And you can see on the charge controller it indicating that there is electricity coming in from the panels. Um, it shows the battery health. It's a little low because I keep running these experiments. Here's our battery that is connected to the center. And then out the right is our DC loads. Our DC loads connect to this. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on. And here I'll have a voltage indicator. Um, this DC ring light is plugged into it. Turn that on. That's being run off of the DC. Then also this DC cigar plug, cigarette plug is coming to our inverter. And that inverter is plugged into this lamp and that lamp. So we'll turn on the inverter. That is running off the DC output of the charge controller. And then it's turning it into AC that is running our light. So, you know, these lights, you'd want to look at the wattage and see if they're discharging faster than the solar can fill it up. Uh, um, you could run your laptop off of these plugs or anything like that. In the future, we're gonna run some experiments to test the charging rate and discharging rates of these systems. Uh, to take this down fully, I'm gonna show you that next, but you, you might wanna just leave it all plugged in because I got some more labs that we're gonna be doing on this exact setup. Uh, so, you know, it's your call, take it down. You can always build it back pretty fast now. If you do take it down, you're going to shut off the inverter. The light goes off. Uh, you're going to turn off, shut off the 12 volt sockets. In fact, you're going to want to do this even if you decide not to take the system down. Let's just go ahead and turn off the load so your battery isn't being discharged. So turn off that, light goes off. Uh, then you're going to unscrew the PV panels. Now, if you're leaving your system together, leave those panels in there so you can charge the battery and keep it nice and healthy. A fully charged battery, especially lead acid battery, is a happy battery. Um, and if you are disconnecting the system, it's critical you disconnect the panels before the battery. Uh, put those PV panel wires somewhere safe, not touching, uh, and also you can turn over the panel or, or cover it so that there's no uh, electricity being produced. Um, and then finally, you can turn off the battery. Only doing this once 
everything else is no is turned off or disconnected from the charge controller. Uh, if you put a switch on your solar panel, which would have been great, then you would have been able to not have to unscrew your solar panels. You could have just switched off the solar panel before you switched off your battery. So then we switch off the battery. It's all off. It's still dangerous because you could short the battery if you're uh, um, if you try hard and have metal. Uh, one of the things you could do is provide some temporary protection. Uh, tape is not something I would trust long term, but it'll definitely work for our experimental setups. I got some tape over that exposed piece of metal, some tape over that exposed piece of metal. And that is it. I hope you enjoy the lab.